We've got an energy summit on at the moment and the concept of nuclear is not part of the conversation. How blinkered can we be? Meanwhile, Rolls-Royce is set to start building parts for its small modular nuclear reactors in the United Kingdom in anticipation of receiving regulatory approval from the British government by 2024. The world is on the cusp of new nuclear installations. Rolls-Royce expects to be providing power to the UK's national grid by 2029, seven years away. They get regulatory approval and it's on at light speed. And yet our government scoffs at the mention of the word nuclear. Chris Bowen gives us one of those classic smirks. Joining the show to tell us more is Liberal Party Defence and National Security Policy Chair Lincoln Parker. Lincoln, thank you for coming in. We want to reveal to our audience tonight that you have actually met with Rolls-Royce executives this week to discuss small modular reactor technology and the possibility of a future in SMRs right here in Australia. Can you tell us how that meeting went and where are they up to in terms of building their first? Well, Rolls-Royce have a long history of providing turbines, engines uh, and those sorts of services to the Australian Defence Force and indeed to the civilian uh, airlines and those uh, players. So right. our Navy and our Air Force, etc. So Rolls-Royce have been here for a very long time. And, and what a lot of people might not realise is that Rolls-Royce also provide the UK Royal Navy with their nuclear reactors in their astute class submarines and their submarines prior to that. So they've had a very long history of nuclear reactor technology development. Now, a small modular reactor or an SMR is essentially very similar to what you get in, in a nuclear submarine. And it's been developed and developed over the many years to the extent now that they can deploy SMRs as they're doing across the entire world. The, the UK, as you just mentioned, is going to SMRs because they're cheap. They're made in factories. So this is not like the old very large Chernobyl type style, which is old technology. This is modular, it's new, it's made in factories, it's de deployed really quickly and cheaply. Cheaply, because that automatically is what you hear from our government. Oh, it's too expensive. But our impediment, though, is not necessarily this government not, in, not wanting to do their due diligence. We've got legislation that says you can't use uranium for power. Um, We've got to get over that first before we move into anything related to doing due diligence on these projects, don't we? Well, that's right. So legislation has to be addressed and, and overturned, and I don't understand why we're not even debating this topic. And um, I'm not spruiking Rolls-Royce any more than I would be any other SMR manufacturers, and there's lots of them out there. There's GE, Hitachi, there's Westinghouse. There's, there's lots of them because they're going in everywhere. But it doesn't seem that we're even having the debate in the public, and it doesn't seem that we're even discussing the benefits that small modular reactors could provide to Australia when we're at a stage where we've had such underinvestment in our coal-fired power plants over the last 10 to 20 years due to the promise of what renewables can supposedly bring. But we're seeing a very good example right now in Europe that the promise of renewables is actually an empty promise. Well, look at Germany. $800 billion they spent... They're going back to turning on their coal-fired power stations now. Uh, France, 72.5% of their power comes from nuclear. Uh, the UK, I think it's 16 small modular reactors in the next 25 years they want to build. And that is the way they get to their net zero target, Lincoln. Well, that's right. And so the Albanese Labor government has promised a 43% carbon emissions reduction on 2005 levels by 2030, Chris. So we're talking about seven years. How are they going to achieve that? So the UK and Canada and many other countries across the world understand that if they're going to get to net zero, they must go nuclear. And even the IPCC has said we must go nuclear. Yes. And so people like Malcolm Turnbull say, well, we're going to go into batteries. But we all understand that batteries, the technology is not there. Batteries are controlled by China as is the cobalt, Good the luck. minerals that go into there. And in 2019, I saw an interesting statistic that came from the Manhattan Institute that said it would require a 1,000 years of production to make enough batteries for two days' worth of US electricity. So we just it is just not a there. 1,000 years? 1,000 years. At the moment, the batteries in Europe, if the lights were to go off, could supply Europe with one minute 
and 21 seconds of electricity. And, in, and by 2030, if they were to increase their battery storage by 10 times, if the lights went out, it would only provide 11 minutes and 45 seconds. The public is being hoodwinked in this country, massively hoodwinked. All right, I want to move on to Kamala Harris. We should not underestimate what the Vice President announced today. This is returning the Peace Corps. This is setting up embassies in Tonga, Kiribati, and also having a greater presence than probably what they've had since World War II. Well, absolutely. But what I found interesting was Minister Pat Conroy came out today and I quote and said, Australia is open to partnering on Chinese projects across the Pacific, which seemed to me to sort of be undermining everything the United States Vice President Kamala Harris had just tried to achieve by appearing at this Pacific Island Forum's leaders' conference. And I'm scratching my head going, what are you talking about? And the G7, led by the United States, has also come out with a fund to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative. Conroy's out of his depth here. What's going Completely on? Completely out of his depth. I don't get it. He, he also said, and I quote, I think with regard to dealing with the Solomon Islands, I think we start by accepting the assurances of the Solomon Islands government that there won't be a Chinese military base in the Solomon Islands. I think his head is buried in the sand. Yeah. I don't understand what he's doing. Yeah, I think he's um, out of his depth, completely and utterly out of his depth. I want to move on to China more specifically and the demands that they've got for us now. They've gone from 14 points and they've whittled it down to four points. They want, one, China's demands were to treat China as a partner rather than a rival. Two, the two countries must seek common ground. Three, Australia must reject manipulation by a third party. Of course, that's a reference to the United States and AUKUS. And four, both countries must build public support featuring positiveness and pragmatism. That means, can you help us don't tell the truth or hide the truth? That's what they're basically saying, right? Um, was the Prime Minister right in the way he reacted? He basically said we won't be bossed around. Well, he was absolutely right and good on Albo. I don't think he had any other alternative other than to go out and say that. But I think we need to be more upfront and more assertive with China ourselves to say, at the end of the day, China, we're a democracy. Mm. You aren't. Mm. And so that's how we're going to approach our relationship. And by the way, here's a list of our own demands. And it starts with you freeing political prisoners. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I said this at the time, I think it was on Friday, mm. on this show. I said, well, hang on a minute. They're playing the parent, we're the daughter being told where to go. Um, I just get the feeling that maybe we should match what they've delivered to us with our own demands, and you're exactly right. What kind of things could we say to China about what we wanted? Well, I think we've already said that. I mean, it starts with, obviously, freeing Peng Shui. Um, yeah. She's a political prisoner, as, as other political prisoners where are locked is she? up. Where is she? Um, secondly, they slapped unilaterally a whole bunch, $20 billion worth of tariffs on all of our trade. Lift them. So, uh, so you know, why aren't they saying, well, sorry about that, that was against WTO rules and regulations. Um, so we'll start by offering you a fig leaf and doing that right now. Uh, and then they set up a military... or they're looking to set up a military base right off our shore, directly threatening our national security. Mm. So, you know, I think they're playing games here. It's disinformation. It's Chinese political warfare trying to whittle us down. Yeah, I think you might be right. Some really good topics we've got through there. Lincoln Parker, thank you so much for your time. Go the Blues. Go the Blues. Yes, I've found someone who's not a Queensland supporter. Isn't that a change?